Greetings, I'm John Spirit, I am a god, and welcome to Modern Factorio Super Shorts. I am using the lovely Blueprint Sandbox this to figure out a coal processing system that can deal with all the byproducts. You can see I have the classic 15 secondary crushers here that, you know, use up a whole belt of coal. The coal dust is being funneled into boilers, which will eventually supply steam to things in the base like, oh, I don't know, um, clay, because I need to use clay for things like drilling fluid, which I'll use to clear out my bitumen seeps. The crushed coal is going to come out, I mean, this is an infinity chest that's deleting everything that comes into it, but eventually it'll go around and power stuff in my base. The coke will also go around and do things, I guess. I haven't decided what to do with all the excess coal yet, coke yet, but probably some of it's going to go to the aluminium system, because I'm going to strip out the current coal system for aluminium. That's right here, to be clear, in a very silly place, so this coke is going to go, you know, from somewhere else, up here. And then if I have any extra, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll make it into tar specifically for asphalt tiles, I guess. Probably also for creosote for the sand casting, actually, so that'll be convenient until I run out of it. But the clever bit is that if I run out of it, I can just make another thing producing tar. Anyway, so that's coke and crushed coal. Meanwhile, the coke is making um, hot air um, because I'm going to be shoving the 250 degrees Celsius coke oven gas into these regenerative heat exchangers. None of the hot coke oven gas is going to be voided, it's all going to be turned into hot air. It's hot air that I'll void if this high tank becomes full, which it is doing very slowly, to be clear. The extra cold coke oven gas will go to oil burners. Right now I'm only going to make two because of course I'm lacking the intermetallics, and these cost ten intermetallics each. The rest I'll just vent, I guess. And the excess hot air I'll vent, but I'm going to try and store it in this pie tank, and I'll put it into, you know, like, iron. Um, improving glassware, and all sorts of things like that. Point is, now we've got a whole system, we just need to actually produce it. I have most of what's needed, except for one extra high-pressure furnace, the oil burner, the steam engines, and one more regenerative heat exchanger. Thankfully, as I am now making roughly oodles of iron, it's not too much of a mess making something like a regenerative heat exchanger just up the- just out of the blue. Or another high-pressure furnace. Or three steam engines. Where am I gonna put this one recipe? How about like right down here? I'll make myself a blueprint, remove the things that I obviously can't actually have in the system. I'll get rid of some of these shoots. Forget that I actually need to put on my blueprint book. I'm just gonna copy paste this. Slowly building it, having enough inner metallics, and making my first oil burner. I guess I could make another, but I don't want to waste my inner metallic on that one. I can use it on probably other useful things. Okay, now I've got a full belt of coal on this line that I just need to bring all the way down there. I think I can do it with some spaghetti. I think I know why I haven't built a mall for things like belts yet. It's because I've increased my crafting speed so much that I don't need it. But I think that I do need to make it, and very soon. Especially after my experience on the server map. Anyway, now I've got raw coal traveling to this system. Once I find a way to discard the ash, which I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but... God, Ash, I hate Ash. I mean, I don't hate Ash because it's useful for so many things, but also Ash. Ash. I'm gonna have to find a place to do all of the, the stone voiding that, that needs to be done, because there's more than just shoving it into a storehouse up here and letting it rot. There are many ways to deal with Ash. Stone, sorry. Alright, it looks like everything is starting its quest to run through the system, but now I need to figure out what to do with the crushed coal and the coke. Okay, coke is now on its way up this belt to the graphite system up here, using it in the aluminium area. I just needed to pull some Bob's Adjustable and Surgery Shenanigans to get the coke in at sufficient speed to the graphite. I've revamped this system a little bit so that the crushed coal can come up from below. Um, I do need to fi- oh, this is supposed to be excess stuff. Let me look at this. Okay, this is going to be output priority on the right, and the crushed coal is going to come up this way. It's going to fuel the ash burners as we expected if we needed to, but most of it's going to go to the basic oxygen furnace. And I guess I'm going to bring the rest of it up to fuel these guys as well, rather than making so much ash from normal coal. The crushed coal line is about to be hooked up, and then the system will begin running again at full speed. That's got the coke running again. The crushed coal still seems to be backing up, so I'm going to bring some of it up to the iron as expected. The other convenient use of this crushed coal is that I can use it for the mall I'm soon to make with my iron and copper. Meanwhile, coke is now the one in danger backing up. An effective void is the destructive distillation column which can turn my coke into coal gas and tar. As I want to do, I can get extra tar out of this destructive distillation column by turning the coal gas into syngas, which for now I will vent because I have so damn much of it, but eventually I will need way more. What am I doing with this tar though? 
Well, I should probably have researched it first. Oh, that's gonna take a bit. But eventually, I'm gonna make asphalt using gravel. And the gravel is nice because I'm gonna get a ton from this system, which keeps clogging up with stone all the way up here. Good heavens, it's full again. Anyway, for now, I think I'm gonna turn the tar into creosote. The stone from the copper, I'm bringing down to this expandable crusher section, where the stone will be crushed into gravel and split so that some of the gravel will go into my asphalt system, and some of the gravel will go to sand here. I've actually decided to move things a bit so I can pull the gravel down outside, because if I'm going to expand this to the left, I need more space on the right to do things. Why sand, though? Well, for sand castings. I've just adjusted my borax line here so that it works in such a way that only one side of the borax gets used. As I do this research, you can see how rapidly I'm depleting my automation science packs, which are basically running at only one-fourth the speed needed to keep up with my Pi science. Very bad, very sad. I promise I'll fix this soon. I promise. I just need to get my bus going first. So for now, excess tar is going into the creosote. I need to deal with the ash coming out of here. I won't really be able to deal with the ash properly until I get this asphalt research. Okay, science is spread out again, and science is restarting. Soon I'll have this asphalt stuff. In interesting news, I'm no longer getting coked to my rubber stoppers, so pie science is mildly backed up, but that's okay since automation science is also backed up. But seriously, where's my coal? Ah yes, the classic my burner mining drills filled up with ash. It's time to replace these friends. I sure do love having lots of power. Not that that is to be a perpetual state. Eventually, I'm not going to have enough. Eventually. Soon. But hopefully by that time, I'll have a wogs running so I can get melamine, so I can get batteries, and all of the other components that I need for everything power-wise. Even the simplest, most basic forms of power require things like anemometers and shafts and utility boxes. Another use of this sand, by the way, while we wait for everything else to start running, especially my use of ash, is going to be drilling fluid. Sand, soil, and clay, which requires steam, excess of which I am pretty constantly getting from a lot of different places, will make me drilling fluid. These bitumen seeps I talked about in the last episode need drilling fluid to break through and get to the whatever you want underneath, like natural gas, tar, or oil. I want oil. All I need for that is a small oil derrick, which thankfully I have all the items necessary for. Very easy, doesn't even need intermetallics, but I do need that damn drilling fluid. Mixers, unfortunately, do require intermetallics, but look, I have some extra because I didn't waste it all on a second oil burner, because I am smart, right? Yes? Haha. -ha. Okay, I've got sand coming out of this gravel crusher, and I'm going to lead it into this mixer, but I also need soil and clay. I have water coming down to the soil extractor, and I have steam coming down from the convenient boilers I have here, which now have an overflow valve going into this gas vent. If I find that I need to, I'll hook up more steam from over in my coal processing system, which hopefully will be running constantly depending on how things go. We're going to find out soon. Now that asphalt is finished, though, I can make myself an automated factory and utilize the gravel coming down from my system here. I'm pulling my ash out of these boilers through the belts, which will take it over to the asphalt crafter. Okay, asphalt tile is now working, and the hope is that it's going to consume all the ash coming from all of these systems. I just need to make sure to power up these inserters, and now I can start getting asphalt out into this storehouse. So hopefully this will be, you know, enough to use up all of the ash um, and tar from this system. But worst comes to worst, the tar can always go elsewhere. Now the question is whether crushed coal is going to back up enough to start working these steam boilers. Because I do need steam going to these clay pits, because I want that drilling fluid. I want it. Those tasty bitumen seeps won't mind themselves. It looks like this system isn't using the crushed coal as fast as I am making it, so that's good. That means I will eventually start getting steam for the clay pits for my drilling fluid. Though it's worth noting that these do use a lot of steam to do their trick, so maybe I'm gonna go and hook up the steam anyway, actually. Yes, that sounds like a great idea. In other fun news, it looks like ash actually might back up on the amount of gravel that I'm getting here. So if I need to, I'll feed more stone to the stone, um, you know, processing here by getting it from iron. Probably also antimony. And it looks like tin's making some as well. Okay, I've now got lots of steam running through these clay pits. Good news. And there's our drilling fluid, how exciting! I'm gonna store drilling fluid in this pie tank so I have a ton of it, and eventually I'll make a barreling machine so I can barrel it and send it to the small oil derricks that I'm gonna put down here. But I'm actually gonna do that in the next episode. For now, I just wanna finish up a couple more optimizations to my base. For example, I brought the antimony stone down, and I'm slowly emptying this enormously full storehouse of stone into the um, gravel processing down here. And now that I have this convenient stone line, I can feed the stone from the iron and tin down into it, so I can deal with a steel chest also full of stone. 
Unfortunately, it seems to be a second process iron ore, because where's my borax? Ah yes, I forgot that I was um, emptying out the backlog. Okay, well the borax is back. Hello borax, how do you do? The borax says hi. All in all, I'm still using too much ash down there, so I'm now feeding the gravel from the antimony, which seems to be produced in quite large amounts, um, also down with the stone line. It should split right down here and join the general gravel line. I've started this pipe mall, which I'm limiting so it doesn't make too many pipes. Especially since my iron is of course- Oh no, I need sand- I forgot about sand castings. One second. Okay, sand castings are coming up to the aluminium and also are going to come up to the iron as well. Oh wait, I don't need this whole sand casting line. I need to join it to the borax. Silly me. That was the whole point of putting borax on a single line on- <laughs> Okay, sand castings are now hooked up to the borax line where they belong. In other good news, it looks like my stone is backing up, so I can put in another jaw crusher. In bad news, I did not make a very good way for the gravel to be released, so things are not good. I am going to do some thinking. Okay, it took a bit of inserter spaghetti, but I have got enough inserters pulling out all of the gravel instead of a bunch of chutes because I don't have space for chutes. Um, and so it should be going out of both of these, um, and hopefully this is expandable? Question mark, question mark, question mark. It's very bad. I also forgot that Borax is going on only one side of the valve for iron, so I had to pull out sand casting using a splitter, but thankfully I have splitters. Turns out the problem with asphalt is now that we have insufficient tar, because the coke is now finally being used for aluminium, and that, you know, I don't know how to fix that one. Oh, it would probably help if I were- okay, it's the ash. Oh, how I wish I could turn ash into tar, please. Well, I guess I'm gonna pull the age-old trick of storing a whole ton of it until I can figure out another thing to do with this ash, which probably involves ash separation, but, I mean... <laughs> separation's always just so much work, because there's just so much stuff involved. Gravel is now backing up. What is my life? Why is everything like this? Part of the reason I realize is because I was pumping tar into sand casting, something I will no longer be doing so that I can get more tar in this thing that's supposed to use up all of my shit. I put the overflow valve in the wrong place. It goes up here. Okay, good news, we are in fact now getting enough tar for our asphalt. The question is the gravel. Hello gravel, what are you doing? To deal with the fact that the clogging of gravel has eliminated the possibility of stone to go the place it needs to go, I have done a stone thing so that stone has its own side of the belt here. And now it is probably going to work. But with the sheer amount of gravel and stone I'm going to be making, I am understanding that I probably eventually need to have a dedicated gravel and stone belt, but I just made things so fucking compact. Gravel looks like it might be starting to get used at reasonable amounts. So, with that said, I think it's time to end today's episode. In the next episode, I'll work on all of the things I hope I can do with these bitumen seeps, including getting a bunch of oil and maybe even getting a bunch of tar. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!